Let's do it. Could have been worse. Could have been like the NRL this weekend. Oh, man. That was like borderline depression for me. Right. I, I saw a couple of articles on it, but I didn't read them because I thought I'd get the, uh, the full scoop from you. So what happened in Queensland? How did Volandi sort all this stuff out? Okay. So Queensland had a little COVID breakout mm-hmm. and they had found six cases uh, of COVID in the community. Now, Queensland have this habit of shutting down everything, snap lock down if there's more than one case. Anytime there's a case or more, they just go into the snap lock down. Now, you've got to take into account as well, and all have moved players, families, ooh, everyone abroad, mm. abroad, but everyone to Queensland. All quarantined and all ready to go to spend time with their partners while they're at work. Then Queensland at 9 a.m. decide that by 4 p.m. that day, they're going to, on the, which was Saturday, everything is shut, everything is stopped from 4 p.m., which means all sports were done for. There was no sport continuing that weekend. It meant that all businesses had to shut, usual big lockdown, everything had to stop, which caused all quite a bit of dramas. It's kind of a joke, to be honest. Massive joke, massive joke. But th- this isn't something that Queensland are doing for the first time ever. Every no, time there's been a lo- the uh, time. sort of a... Yeah, they do this. It's always been a few cases in this massive lockdown. It's like Victoria. They're in their fifth or sixth or something like that. Yeah. So they're going to a three-day snap lockdown. And they said, uh, we'll reassess everything by Monday. But from today to 4 p.m. Monday, we're in a three-day lockdown. Everything is stopped, including rugby league, which doesn't make things ideal. So then NRL got into crisis meetings from 9 a.m. that day. Uh, they got word from the Premier of what was going on. Um, and they basically said, yeah, look, everything's shut. So they literally had crisis meetings. So they got all the 16 CEOs within five to 10 minutes to jump on a massive Zoom call and say, everyone stay tuned to what's happening because it's not looking good at this stage. It's crazy how they work. It's crazy how Peter Vlandis gets things done, how Andrew Abdo is on top of everything. It is phenomenal to watch. In that day, they sent a 100-page letter to the government to get him exempt to play at Suncorp Stadium in Brisbane, which was one of the places that was locked down. To be locked down, yeah. Yeah. So they come out, they 100-page document in the day. It's, it's absurd. Had it all, uh, and, and it was to the point of like every extreme measure that masks will be worn to the game, even run on the field with them prior to the, the start of the game. And then the second the game finishes, everyone puts a mask back on and they stick with it through till they get back to the hotels. Mm. So Vlandis tried to negotiate it through the Premier, then got it through to their health department, Queen's Health, and then tried to get it through the NRL's Project Apollo team to get this all kind of happening. Meanwhile, that, the games that day, clubs were getting flights from where they were staying to Suncorp to play. They, all, they landed and they got told you have to go back. Some got to the place. The second they got out, got told to come straight back on because we have to prevent any COVID cases spreading. Jump straight back on the plane, move straight back to the hotel. They said, we're potentially not having an early this weekend. By that night, about 11 p.m., 10 p.m., the government confirmed and they got back and said, all right, an oil will continue this week. But these very extreme measures are in place. And they got it done within 12 hours. So how do you do it? What, what, what was in that document to get them exempt? So in the 100-page document, mm-hmm. again, lot, lots in it. Um, but it was mainly doing, it was mainly Vlandis and Abdo in a way sucking up to them with every bit they could in terms of player safety, worker safety, having less staff at grounds, um, having all played at the one location so that they're not playing at three different, four different stadiums across Brisbane. They're playing at all at Suncorp Stadium. So they have to cut it all into that. Um, less workers. So there were a lot of people that usually sit in the box with the coach, weren't allowed to go. Very limited staff. Um, and COVID tests every day, getting checked for temperature checks, being ruled out if they couldn't play. Um, but they went to the most extreme of extreme measures just to ensure that the game would go on private jets, everything like funded pretty much by the NRL. 
So they went and they've done this. But the problem I have with all this was horse racing was still continuing on the Saturday. So everything was locked down, but somehow horse racing still got to continue. So this is why this whole lockdown stuff does my head in, bro. Because there's so many, so many inconsistencies yeah, yeah, with right. how everything has, has gone out. So, but look, NRL didn't kick a stick. They didn't say, oh, we got stopped by horse racing. They didn't kick up a stick. They said, we have to get this game. We have to continue this game, to continue this game going. We can't just hold and, and blame and, and point the finger at anyone else. We have to get on top of this. And they did. They got on top of it. Yeah, but the fact that a government or a state government can just shut down a multi-million dollar game in 12 hours is ridiculous. The fact they shut it down six hours before a game was scheduled to be played? That's what I'm saying. Was was insane. That's full on. It's full on. It, it's a joke. But then again, it's the health and safety of everyone concerned. They're, and I can see where they're coming from because their priority is to keep the health and safety of their state intact. Sure. The way to go about it, not the best. Why would we move every Tom, Dick, and Harry to Brisbane, have them all quarantined, and then you just shut the game down? Like, if if the if they had no direct contact with the health department, that would have been stuff. You reckon this makes them lose the grand final? Yeah, 100%. 100%. The, the government stuffed up because the, purely for the fact that the horse racing got to continue and purely for the fact that there was another industry still being able to perform and still do as it was, yeah, they had no crowds and whatever, but they still got to continue and the NRL had to shut down. I'm hearing that NRL are open to another move because now things are sort of easing in Victoria. Like, cancelling the season is not an option. No, nah, I don't know why they wouldn't have just moved it to New Zealand when the bubble was open. They should have. You know, in hindsight, that would have been phenomenal. Because that would have been such a smart move. Yeah, it would have been brilliant. But... Yeah, that one that I wish they looked into, but maybe there wasn't enough hubs that they could have split all 16 teams across. Maybe there wasn't enough, maybe not enough big enough places to fit. You got to consider, you got to remember 16 clubs, or they play, or their wives, or they, some of them have a lot of kids. Yeah, okay, but it's another country. They've got the facilities, they've got hotels, they've got things to go yeah. to. I think, I think, I think just with the fact that everything was going so rapidly in New South Wales. There wasn't enough time to think international. Think let's go New Zealand. I don't think there was enough time around that, which is why they had to keep it domestic. I don't know. I think Queensland was such a dumb idea in the first place, seeing how they go into snap lockdowns every other day. Yeah, but you know what? So did Victoria and so did South that's Australia. What, so but everyone is following suit. That's what I'm saying. Go to, go to WA. Yeah, but WA are the same. No, nah, not, not as bad as Queensland and Victoria. But they still do snap lockdowns, right? Like they, they still yeah, yeah, but go not into as, crazy but, snap lockdowns. Yeah, but not as frequently. Not as frequent because there's never as many cases. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Why uh, risk it? Why risk it with a high density sort of environment with Queensland and Victoria when you can go to somewhere that's got barely any cases happening? Again, it's if there's enough stadiums to be played across because there's, no, there's no NRL teams, so there's only mainly AFL stadiums, and AFL still continuing mm. as per normal to an extent. So there's, there's a lot to consider around that. Look, uh, no, you're probably I, right. It could have worked. It I, just, I, I feel like this is all going to blow up in someone's face down the line. I think it will blow up in Queensland's because they'll, they'll, they'll definitely lose potentially the final series and the grand final. I think what they want to do is that if they're looking at going to Victoria, if they do go to Victoria, they'll have to have the harshest protocols again. Yeah. Because Victoria can just go into another lockdown or that. And yeah. Victoria now still have like two, three cases a day. Yeah, like this whole wearing masks before they jump onto the field. And it's lunacy. They, Look, this is, the whole thing is pathetic. It's it's stupid. Even when they've just finished the game and have to put masks on, it's very dumb. But if that's what it takes to continue for the game to continue, of course, like, I'll you do it. But, whatever you have to do to get the game to go, but it's just so dumb. Like you see these guys smashing each other face to face, and then they're putting a mask on after the game. It's like, what's that going to do for any of these players? It's a joke, bro. The whole thing is a joke, and this is why there are so many inconsistencies with all this stuff that I won't get into now, but this is one of the many reasons why it all, the whole thing frustrates me. Stato.